Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream, where we show you all the ways to make your dreams come true. One of the great ways that we like to show up is something that really honors people who make a difference in the planet. People who are basically going to their own drumbeat, right? They recognize they've got a gift that's really different. There's great reason it was given to them and they're finding a way to disseminate that out into the world. And that is being an entrepreneur. That is doing your own thing and finding your own tribe that resonates with what you do. So in being an entrepreneur, one of the prevalent things that I have heard, seen, and certainly I experience in my own work is a lot of overwhelm, to-do lists that never end, and also exhaustion. And I keep hearing this over and over again, so much so that we've created a show just for you, and I brought in the best expert to talk about this. So in a little bit, I'm gonna bring on Melanie Benson, who will be talking to you. Coach Melanie will be giving you lots of tools and guidance so she can actually help you move ahead and have a different point of view, a different tool belt about how to work with what you got and maybe make it a whole lot easier and a whole lot richer, a whole lot more fun. So first, I just want to thank Dr. Dane here, D-A-I-N-H-E-E-R. Thank you, Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness for sponsoring this show. And if you want some energy healing like that, they do courses all around the world in all languages. They've got facilitators everywhere, and they teach something called BARS, which is an energy healing. I do it. I'm a facilitator, and it's highly recommended. They've also got products. You can just go online and start real slow there. So it's drdanehere.com and accessconsciousness.com. And I'm going to ask you, please, all to take a moment because I know you tune into the show. I know that you write me comments and thank you. I read everything that you post. I love reading your f feedback. By the way, you can't hear that from me enough that everything actually gets read and processed and sometimes sent to my guests. So thank you. Keep writing. Keep letting me know how the shows are affecting you. And leave a review. Leave a five-star review for this podcast so others can find this conversation. I'm on YouTube at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And you can watch the video of this, which is really fun to see my guests. Also, BBS Radio, iHeart Radio, Apple Podcasts, Player FM. Stitcher, Spreaker, Learn Out Loud, or iHeartRadio, your review makes a difference. So go to these venues, Dare to Dream, and leave a five-star review. And on this show, I feature really fascinating cutting-edge leaders who have created mage goals. <laughs> They're really living the life they came here to live. So the question to you is, what would you do if you knew that you could not fail? Big question, and I hope you'll go there because if you could feel completely bold and free, what would that be? Just trust in that to guide you forward. That's really why you're here, and that's what this show is here to facilitate. So please become part of the Dare to Dream podcast team. Go to patreon.com slash dare to dream and donate to the show. You have a big purpose to fulfill. And I am here to absolutely support you in fulfilling and creating that purpose, as are my guests. At patreon.com slash dare to dream, you can help support this show. It's free to you. And if you want the show to continue to flourish and be sustainable with the best quality guests for $1 and more, you can donate and make a difference. And by the way, I see that go through go through as well. So just know you will get a thank you from me directly and a little gift. We are your number one transformation conversation. And today I ask you to go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. So what if you could overcome your money pressures and your business overwhelm? I'm going to ask you to take a big, big, deep breath around that because I even feel those words, money pressures, business overwhelm, it's very prevalent today. And what if you could achieve the unimaginable? My guest today, Coach Melanie Benson, is a profit amplifier and has a gift for guiding fast-paced, mission-driven messengers to thrive financially in their work. Melanie hosts 
the Amplify Your Success podcast. She's the author of Rewired for Wealth, co-author of Entrepreneurs.com Startup Guide to Starting an Information Marketing Business. And she has her success tips featured in magazines such as American Express Open Forum, Bloomberg Business Week, Woman's Day Parenting Magazine, and University of Phoenix Alumni Magazine. She's on the executive team for the Women's Speaker Association, and Melanie is a member of the Association of Transformational Leaders. Her website is her name, MelanieBenson.com. Melanie, welcome to Dare to Dream. It's great to have you. Oh, my friend. I'm so happy to be joining you. I love your show and your podcast so much. It's so inspiring. Yay. Thank you. And thanks for being a part, a contribution to this inspiration, because you're going to give us a piece of heaven here. Truthfully, <laughs> like for entrepreneurs walking around with this dark cloud, they're here for so much good, to create so much good, and yet there's this enormous burden they're carrying around of being overworked, working way harder than the money coming in, and this sense of being overwhelmed, like I'm never going to get through that to-do list. And by the way, some of the stuff on that to-do list you can't just go, well, one through three, they're important. I'll let the rest go. Like, there's a lot that's important on that list. So, talking about overwhelm, money in business, what do you just want to say, like, as an overview, as an expert in this area to start the ball rolling in this conversation? Yeah. And I love that we're bringing overwhelm into the conversation because it feels like it's really up for people right now. And it's almost like there's this continuum between the amount of ambition you have and the level of high achievement that you're used to and your level of overwhelm, right? <laughs> it's like the more you have like ambition and drive and excited, exciting big goals that overwhelms and, you know, like that pressure of, of how much more can I take on? And right now, what I think there's something really it's almost like there's a there's a transformation that's occurring. I love you used that word earlier, where who we have to be to pull off our biggest, boldest goals has to upgrade, has to evolve in order to pull off goals we've never achieved before. Uh, I'm noticing that there's a lot of people who are kind of giving up on their dreams right now. They're saying, I don't think I can do that because how I got here it's exhausting. Like I can't do more. And maybe you've heard that conversation. I mean, I think some of our peers have had it with us. I know certainly a lot of my clients are having it. I hear it kind of the noise in the hall at an event. There's this, um, this fear really of like, I have no idea how to get where I want to go without giving up something really, really important to me. I, I kind of, I, I've been starting to call it ambition overwhelm, right? It's like the more ambition you have, the more overwhelm that kicks in. And I think one of the most important things we have to do is we have to take a step back, Debbie, and we have to ask ourselves, what's at stake? Like, what's my why here? Like, why do I want to go to that next level? Why do I have that bigger goal? Why am I pushing, forcing, and challenging myself to achieve that next level? Like, is there really something that I'm meant to do or am I getting caught up in this momentum that gets created when you see what's possible and you're kind of just following the pack, right? Like how do we unpack that a little bit and discern what's my thing to do? What's my drive, my ambition, my goals, my dreams, and what am I doing just because I think I'm supposed to? Absolutely. You know, something that people hear a lot in workshops led by very big names that we all know and command a large audience is take massive action, take massive action. And people really take that to heart and they go out and start implementing it. And what happens is they start getting buried. They're trying so hard that ambition you talked about, that overdrive that you mentioned, that is literally overdriving them. And it also makes me wonder as I'm listening to you share about this, if there's a component of not being enough that gets woven into this for entrepreneurs. Yeah, you know, we've actually explored this before and I, I love that we're becoming aware of how much our own beliefs about ourselves, about 
who we are, what we're capable of, how we stack up, right, against other people. And there's always that little comparison bug of, oh my gosh, like they're doing so much. Am I enough in the world? And I think that there's a significant, um, like there's a, there's a mirror of, you know, who am I being right now? Am I really showing up in my fullest capacity or am I, am I like doubting and having so much fear and so much second guessing of who I am that it's creating this cloak that weighs us down and causes us to play it safe and play small. And, and that's because we don't want to be seen as not enough, right? Like the, every part of our being wants to be seen as enough. And yet if we don't believe that, like if we don't have that intrinsically, we're going to do all these things consciously and unconsciously that sabotage that and, and cause us to not do the very things that could work to propel, to catapult us. Can I share an example on this real quick? Yes, please. I'd love that. Well, you know, it's like, I'm really, I'm so blessed. I've mentored and coached so many amazing souls on their journey to being greater in success. And I see some patterns here. And one of the patterns is we set some business goals because there's this, like, there's this calling inside, right? Like something's calling us, something's sparking, something's getting our attention and saying, you could have a podcast, you should write a book, you've got all this great knowledge, you could build a business around it, or you could take your business to that next level. And then when the inside doesn't match and there's the doubts and the fears, what I notice is there's the more you push up against that edge of what you've done before, the more you push up against that, like, okay, I know how to do this, but I've never gone beyond that edge before. And that's scary over there. Like, I don't know how to do that yet, but you know, you have to go over there. This is when those doubts and fears like start to, um, it's almost like they, they like come in like this big monster, right? That, that comes on top of your dream and says, are you enough? Can you do that? Uh, who do you think you are to want to pull off that goal? Every single belief that you have carried with you on some level since you were a child will start to crop up and, and scream at you like a toddler wanting attention. And that's where we derail. Like that's where we start to pull back. And, and, and I think that's the work we have to do is how do we manage those hidden fears? Those, I call them uh, hidden profit drains that actually start to pull you away from your goals instead of fuel you and power you through the, that edge to get to the next level. So somebody can be really good at what they do mm -hmm. and can currently also sabotage themselves while they're on the road to do that. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I've done that. <laughs> right? Like who we, we do, we as really talented human beings will hit that wall. Um, I think it's Gay Hendricks. He calls that you're hitting your upper limit. Mm -hmm. You, we all have deep inside of us this level of expansion, this level of capacity, this level, like this deeper why of what we can accomplish in the world. And yet many of us stay in the zone of where we're good because let's face it, our egos want to feel good at what we do, right? We want to be seen as capable. We want to be able to go to work and, and do what we do every day and go, yeah, I nailed it, right? It doesn't feel very good to st step into that unknown zone, that gray area, that, that really powerful, but yet really sticky zone of, I don't know how to do this next thing. And yet I have to do it. And you're terrified and you're, 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 and you're simultaneously knowing I have to be in this place to go where I've got to go next. I call it letting go of the how, like you have to let go of knowing how to do the thing you were born to do in order to get where you want to go. And that means you got to develop some new muscles, some new um, level ways of thinking in the space where you do the things you've never done before to get where you never knew you wanted to go, but you have to go. Big, so big. Oh my goodness. So this letting go piece and to fill in there, you do some healing work with your clients. And I know you do something which I love the name of NLP recoding. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about how that is engaged with what we're talking about. How can you heal with recoding? Yeah. So recoding is my, uh, basically it's a word I made up for something I learned how to do using neurolinguistic programming, which is what NLP stands for. It's a way of teaching your mind 
to become congruent with the goals that you have set for yourselves. Because basically, here's, here's the quick snapshot of how to know what you're programmed in life for. Because we're all programmed. We all have a, basically an internal processor that's conditioned for the level of money we have, the level of love we're willing to experience, the like level of service, Right? Yeah. We get to a certain place and we go to that and we keep automatically getting ourselves of this stasis. But God forbid we try to go a little up in the money, the career, the love, whatever it is. And it's like, we're right back. Totally. It's like a, like that rubber band can only stretch so far or, you know, some people use the thermostat, you know, it's like your temperature can only go so high before you're like, nope, not working for me. And so when you know that there's a goal or an outcome that's way bigger, way beyond what you've achieved, we actually have to recode our belief systems, our thought processes, our habits, and I call it our money DNA blueprint so that we can actually achieve that level of success, that level of financial well-being, that level of love, whatever, you know, we can apply it to anything. I tend to specialize in the money and success side. And a quick barometer is look at the thing you're striving for. Look at the thing you've set goals and you can't achieve. Look at the thing you've been pining for over and over and over again. And is it what you want? And if not, I can guarantee you that your belief system is set to match the quality of that outcome. And this doesn't make you bad. It doesn't make you a failure. It doesn't mean that you're broken. None of that is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that we have a set of conditions, thoughts, beliefs, ideas, and a paradigm of what we believe is possible that influence every decision and action we take, every decision we make, every action we take, and that's what's delivering that result. So if you want to raise that and you want to raise your game in that area, then we've got to figure out what's missing in the mindset, in the blueprint that would make it automatically happen. And that's where my kind of secret sauce is. Oh, good. And we're going to do a little bit of that during the show today. Yeah, I would love it. Okay. And I want you to feel free to interrupt me anytime when you're like, oh, I feel a recoding coming on. Okay. <laughs> we're going to have you recoded. <laughs> I would love that. I want people to really, really experience your potency here. Yeah. So, you. okay, mindset, really important to success. That's what I'm hearing. And one of the things that you take a big stand for is these big, hairy, audacious goals, like really go big. And I love that because that really pushes the limit for people. I'm sure that sets them up for a perfect recoding because it puts them in a place where there's like, Rah! I really want this, but right. Story comes up, fear comes up and all of that. How can we actually do that, but also jumpstart our confidence? Yeah. I call it owning your bold and I probably should give you a little backstory on why this is so important because um, I'm that person where by nature, which is going to make you completely laugh. I'm completely shy. Mm -hmm. uh, I will. I, I love to be in my comfort zone and I'm very like, I played it safe my entire life. Right. And so when I started my business 20 years ago, I was broke. I was struggling. Like I had absolutely no idea how to make my business work. And what I had to do, which I didn't understand at the time, but I now understand is like I had to make some bold moves. That meant I had to set a bold goal. And so I set a, a goal and, and I'm making like a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month. And I set a goal that I was going to break six figures within the year. And I had no idea how to do it. It felt completely terrifying. No one in my family had ever made that kind of money, right? It was like, it's like, all right, what's the stretch? What's the thing I have to stretch into? And here's the key. By not knowing how to do it, I could not rely on all my old patterns, all my old thinking, all my own belief systems, all my old belief systems. I had to become the person that thought, had action, and had a paradigm that that was the way I lived, like as if it was easy. And so I had to program, I had to recode everything in me to match the person who was easily making six figures. And then I used it again to break seven figures. And so here's where things get messed up for people is they don't realize that they, they think I'm setting a bold goal. I'm setting myself up for failure because I don't know how to do it. And it's so big and there's so many pieces and now I'm overwhelmed, right? It's not how you get to the bold goal that matters. It's that you're setting a goal that you absolutely know how to do and you're slightly terrified and you have to shatter your current reality to achieve it. Then you shift into the strategy 
if you're asking for support and like really following this process to pull it off in a way that you had to do to become the person you were meant to be. That's really what it is. And there's a momentum and a, and like a confidence and a courage as you take every step forward that gets built, that makes you become somebody that can achieve any goal in life. That's why I like bold goals. And I think that's, that's why making a bold move is so powerful. It's like, you can't stay small when you have a bold goal. And here's the real thing, Debbie, is the bold goal for you could be, I'm going to pick up the phone and call some people I'm scared to call right now. That might be the boldest thing you do right now. But for someone else, it might be, I'm going to have my first live event and I'm going to teach a hundred people how to like do the thing I do in the world, right? Like everybody has their own version of bold. You're not supposed to take on my bold version. I'm not supposed to take on yours. You got to find your bold. You got to own your bold and do that. Oh my goodness. Totally. And I can really relate to this because every time I've set a bold goal in my life, you know, it's a thing. And then you bust through, you set the strategy and the light starts going on and then you do it. And it's like, oh, I could do that again. I could replicate that. Wasn't so bad. Wasn't as big as I thought it was. And now I know how to do it. Yeah. So that's like there now. That's in like the I can do it realm. But then there's the next big goal, right? Because life is about change. It's constantly changing. It's constantly up leveling. And there's the next piece to get in there and figure out and set and step into. So it's interesting that we're constantly replicating that experience over and over. It, is there ever a way to make it easier? Because that zone of being in that maybe overwhelm and fear, even about thinking about creating things, yeah. can be a lot for people. Yeah. And I want to share that. And I also in a minute want to talk about what happens when it doesn't work, right? Because I don't want to like pretend like it's all rainbows and unicorns. You know, there are realities where we fail and, and, you know, the bold goal that you pursue doesn't work out. But I want to talk about why that's so valuable before we, we move away from this, this particular question. Mm -hmm. But um, this whole idea of how to like achievable goal, right? I think part of it is you have to break it down. Like there's a, there's a terminology in the, the training I taught many, or uh, sorry, learned many years ago where you have to chunk down to small actionable steps. And this is the same thing I teach in my getting out of overwhelm tools too, is the reason we're overwhelmed is we're trying to like climb a mountain that's going to take weeks, but we're trying to do it in a day. And our perception, like we turn on the superhero, <laughs> Debbie, do you have a superhero cape that you tend to throw on and go, I can do that tomorrow when really you need to kind of give yourself a break too, just in case. the cape <laughs> yeah. <doesn't work. laughs> Exactly. So, you know, we do this to us. Why? Because if we don't, we probably won't ever tackle the goal. And yet what we're doing is we're kind of setting ourselves up for that exhaustion and that frustration and that overwhelm. So one of the things I always do with my clients is, Literally like take the big goal that's up here and chunk it down to what do I need to do tomorrow? Okay, so that's one piece of the puzzle is move it into small actionable Okay, I can do this in an hour not okay This is something I'm giving myself an hour to do but really I need two weeks and I think that really starts to help Train our minds to to focus on this the what's the next thing to do not what's the mountain of things to do the second piece of this is prioritizing. And I know this is actually, this is like a four letter word to a lot of creatives, right? They're like, prioritize, I want it all right now. Like, you know, it's all equally important. And when you have a lot of ambition and you have a lot of drive, like prioritizing feels like, it's like trying to learn how to uh, ice skate. Like I never learned how to ice skate, Debbie. Um, I would fall, I never quite figured out the balance thing. Uh, but what I realized is, is that you need momentum to ice skate well, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, the idea of prioritizing is similar. It's like you have to start somewhere. You have to kind of find that balance and then let the momentum carry it. And that means you have to learn how to prioritize what has to be done next, not what are the 17 things I wish could be done next. And what that does is it allows you to, to really start to understand what really has to be done next to stay on track. And that might mean you have to pause some things. It might mean you have to have that um, 
like that reality conversation. Uh, yes, I do want to get all these things done, but I can't. I have an hour or I have a day. And so the next thing I can realistically complete is this. Now, I will say one little side in, uh, note on that is if you continually have really big projects with lots of moving parts and you tend to be the one and only person that's moving those goals forward, you may be uh, kind of blocking your progress. I call it bottlenecking by um, trying to do it alone. And it might be time to hire help, like, you know, get an intern, uh, hire a VA, virtual assistant, hire, you know, get a team member to help take some of the things off your plate that they can do better, faster, or cheaper. So you can do the things that you do well to move the, the ball forward. And I know that's kind of a, 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 it's confronting for some people to think about letting go of control and letting other help them. But if you've got big goals, you're going to have to learn to delegate and ask for help at some point. Can you do a little bit of work around this? Yeah. Oh, yay. Here we go. Love it. There is, there are a lot of people I know that have difficulty with this. Yeah. It is about letting go. It's about trusting. And there's another interesting factor. And that's overwhelmed about stopping what you're doing as an entrepreneur to take the time to teach someone brand new mm -hmm. your business and all the things you want and need, right? And that's not just a one and done. That's a constant nurturing of the relationship until at some point, of course, they can be rather autonomous. So there's a lot of people like, I know I need to bring in somebody but I, I literally don't even know how to stop long enough to do it. And if I did, I don't know how to trust this other human with my precious business. Yeah. So there's two layers of recoding. One layer is the thought that has to change to support the outcome you want. We're going to do that layer. The other layer is I'm working on these thoughts. I'm doing my affirmations. I'm changing my thinking and I'm still stuck. I'm resisting. That's when we have to go a little bit deeper and we have to go into your unique situation. The moment in which you created the uh, fear, the, the conflict, you know, there's a conflict of if I do this, I lose that or the story you've made up that says no one's ever going to help me. Right. Right. So somebody usually has one of those three, what I call profit drains that's holding them back. Mm. In this situation, if we just look at the, the first layer of recoding, what do you think someone would have to believe in order to be someone who easily asks for help and delegates? Oh, you, you took a turn there for um, Yeah. So what would they believe to easily delegate? And what was the last part? And ask for help. Oh my goodness, they'd have to believe that there was somebody there who could swoop in and do a stellar job and that they could literally know and trust that things are being handled better than they could have ever imagined. Yeah, that would be the dream, right? Like that's the dream now. There, if we go deeper and let's say, so I'm going to take a client that I worked with on this very thing one time. She thought she actually had money mindset blocks. She thought I have this fear of spending money. That's what she believed. But really what was going on was she had a fear of um, asking for help and someone letting her down. And deep, deep downside, she had this story that happened, you know, something happened in childhood that she created this immediate impression like, okay, when I ask for help, you know, no one's really going to have my back and I'm going to have to do it myself anyway. So why bother? And so she was basically living from that place. I call it gathering evidence. Every time she had an opportunity to ask for help, that story would run through her mind. She's like, yeah, no one's going to really like help me properly. So why bother? It's just a lot of money to spend. So when we recoded and she, realized that she'd made up this limiting story one of the first things she said was wow like if I let go of the story and I actually um, allow people to help me I could I could invest maybe a thousand to two thousand dollars a month in the kind of team I want but I could actually turn that into two hundred thousand dollars a month in revenue she knew what she wanted to do she knew how to grow her business she had locked herself in to this trap of don't hire help because of this limiting belief. And you can give me 
any person who tells me I can't afford it, no one's going to help me, right? Uh, I don't have time to slow down. All of that roots back to a time you made a decision that you couldn't get help or whatever the story was. And now you're kind of playing that out over and over and over again. It's like a movie that you keep going to every, every day for the rest of your life. And the trick is you got to create a new movie. You got to create a new possibility. It's so what if you, day, so, not, not hiring? <laughs> yeah. Like, so let's just take this a little bit deeper. Mm-hmm. What's the cost of not hiring? You stay small. Mm-hmm. So at what point? And exhausted. Are, I think you stay really exhausted when you're, managing an entire business on your own because you're doing things you don't love to do that take you an immense amount of energy because it's not your passion it's not your greatest skill and you are not spending enough time in the things that fuel you and give you energy and life force and the enthusiasm and inspiration to go conquer the next mountain Mm -hmm. and this is the plight of so many business owners you've locked yourself into i can't afford it i can't believe somebody would ever help me the way i need to Instead of, well, I'd actually be willing to get 90% there to get 5,000% further in my goals, right? Like what if you knew I'm, I'm willing to get 90% right, you know, like maybe they don't do it all the way right. Maybe they're not perfect, but I get 90% of it right, but it's growing me 5,000% faster. Would that be worth it? Oh, yes, that's true. So now we've recoded the thought. The thought is not, can I afford it, but can I afford not to invest a thousand dollars to make $200,000? That's the, now your brain just probably just went, what, right? Like you start going, wait a minute, where am I doing that? That's recoding. You know, you recoded the mindset that's driving your current level of success and you recalibrate it so you can achieve the next level. When your molecules in your brain go, wait, what'd she say? Like, holy mackerel, I feel like everything's shifting right now. You feel it. Deep. Wow. And so once we come up with that statement, right, which is beautiful because it shows you all the space in between that is fully not aligned with that, right? But also what would happen, like you were saying, strategically that you could do in order to manifest this way of thinking. So what is the next part that you recommend to get us here? So we have to start with, okay, so what is the thing that's in the way? What's the belief I'm holding or the story I'm telling myself? And we recode that to be, well, what has to, what's congruent? So that's step one with the level of success I want. Now we have to look at is what do I have to be willing to do? Okay. Cause it's not just changing the thought. You literally have to do things differently. But once you recoded your mindset, you're going to start to be more congruent with it. You're going to be like, well, this is easy. Instead of resisting it, you're going to be like, well, of course I would do this. So what's the action you would have to take? So if we keep going with this theory, what we might do next is say, all right, so I get it. It's time to hire. How, you know, what would I have this team do that would free me up to do the things that only I can do to propel business in the door? Or what could I outsource that would actually generate more leads? Or what could I, could I actually hire someone to help me with some of the sales, right? So then we start to get strategic and focus on our money producing or goal shifting activities so part of the reason why i think people get a little uncomfortable with the idea of hiring is they're like well how am i going to afford that right how do i pay for it so what you have to do is you have to direct line it to what will i do or what will my team do that will drive the sales in the door and we can apply this to anything you know it's like if your fear is speaking you know a lot of people have this fear of speaking i'm not good enough do i have a message to share well all right so what if you if you don't share this message you know you're not going to touch those one or two or three lives that have to hear your message now instead of okay well i'm scared to speak it's like all right well what's the next step i need to come up with a topic all right so i don't know how to come up with a topic all right so i'm going to hire someone who's really good at pulling out Uh, speeches and help me craft a speech. Then the next step is I'm going to go book myself on some podcasts and get on some stages, right? So you have to say, what's the thing that's a shift and what's the actions I take that will make it easy to achieve that goal? Hmm. You could throw seven seven or 10 or a hundred of these at me, Debbie. We'll find a way to recode them. (laughs) I love that. That 
first of all, bully for you for the confidence of knowing the recipe to make a change. And what I can feel when you're describing the possible strategies, right? You have a new thought, like if I, what, what would that person have to be? Okay. And then if I was that, what would have to happen to make that happen? And I hear you talking about strategies and what I'm feeling here is excitement. Yeah. All of a sudden that sort of black cloud that was here about, ah, oh, you know, the overwhelm and I have to do this and I don't think and all that, it feels quite limiting. When I hear you talk about this possibility, suddenly my excitement starts up about taking the action and about what's possible. Yeah. Um, I want to tackle, go a little bit deeper with that. And also I want to tackle that thing, but what happens if it doesn't work, right? Yeah. So there's, there's one more piece of this puzzle and some people will go through the recoding process and they're like, but Melanie, I still feel a lot of fear. I'm resistant. And so usually that's because there's something about the goal that they've missed. Like this is where my barometer of, I think you set a goal that's someone else's goal. Is this really your goal, right? Like, is this the thing you're lit up to do? Or are you living someone else's, you know, advice or coaching or the thing they said you should do? So that's another thing to look for. But um, I, uh, here's, here's a little test you can do. When you think about having that thing, that, that money, that goal met, uh, like living into that dream, does it like light you up? Like you were just saying, Debbie, do you get excited and expanded and think, yeah, this is my thing? Or does a bunch of fear come up? And all of a sudden you think of every single reason why it can't work. What this means is there's fear that you're letting uh, drive the bus. Like I always say, this is where you let the logic mind take over and make decisions for you because fear is oftentimes disguised as your logic mind. So what you want to do is you want to notice like, well, is there anything that could shift in the goal and this thing being real that would actually make it feel better again? I had a client one time who she was building this um, business. She was a org professional organizer and she wanted to grow her business in a different way, but she was so afraid. She had so much nerves. She had so many like things about it that weren't working. She would focus on all the reasons why it wouldn't work. And so I asked her like, all right, well, what would have to happen for it to feel exciting for you? And all of a sudden she realized the only thing that was in the way is she didn't have a bookkeeper. <laughs> that was what was literally in the way for her. She was so exhausted trying to keep up with the receivables. She's like, well, you know, if I actually had somebody to help me with the invoicing and the receivables and like taking care of all that, I think I would want to like go pursue this next thing. I'm like, well, that's an easy thing to solve, right? Mm -hmm. So we plug in goal met, has a bookkeeper to help her. And now all of a sudden she's feeling excited and inspired again. So that's, that's really important. Do we have time that I could share this thing about what do we do if it doesn't work? You got to, because now it's in my brain. Yeah. I really want to hear this. Well, I'm a realist, right? And I, I don't like to pretend like everything's always going to work perfectly. Sometimes you shoot for the big goal and it doesn't work, but here is what's so important. I guarantee you that you're also not going to be where you started. So no. what it does is it propels you towards it. What, what do you mean by you guarantee we won't be where we started? Meaning you can't start here, go for a bold goal. And then like, you can't be go back. You can't go back to here. Once you start pursuing the bold goal, bold goal, <laughs> tongue twister. And so you may not have gotten fully to the goal, but you'll be somewhere between where you started and where you wanted to be. Meaning you've made progress. You've, you've learned things, you've grown. And my guess is you've got information about what you need to learn how to do that will make you better at achieving the goal that you recalibrate and set next. Right? So let's say, Oh, I'll, t I'll take another client example. I have a client I work with who's in the, the uh, esthetician world and, uh, she's been an industry leader for like 40 years. And so she's kind of learning how to bring the online side into the mix. And she had set a goal to fill a, a new online program. And she did sell some, but what the problem was she didn't actually follow my advice, right? So she kind of went renegade and did things her way. And she set the goal and kind of went for it and did some of the things, but not all of them, which is, you know, it happens. And so what happened was she was really disappointed and sad and frustrated and like, oh, this isn't going to work for me. And what, 
when we talked about it and we kind of unpacked like the purpose of that bold goal, it, it's not always to always meet the goal. It's to recognize what your fears are that's getting in the way, what your patterns are that aren't serving you. And what do you have to shift in the way you do your, your work to achieve goals easier and faster? Or maybe you learned that the goal really wasn't the goal you want. You thought you wanted it, but you're like, maybe I don't want that. And you know, with this client, one of the biggest ahas was she realized, I have not been asking for help. She's one of those people that she struggled with that. And I, if I'm going to pull this off, I need to hire someone that can take over a lot of the marketing. Mm -hmm. That was a great aha for her. So I just wanted to be clear, what happens if you don't achieve the goal? Something else magical has happened. That is so encouraging. And I have to say, I'm really curious, how do you find your clients or how do your clients find you, Melanie? Me? Yeah. Uh, well, there's, it's funny you ask that. You know, I do a lot of speaking and I, I'm you know, very out there in the world. A lot of people search for spiritual business coach. <laughs> And they find me uh, and my website. Uh, as a matter of fact, a new client just came on today uh, doing that. Um, a lot of people through my podcast, you know, they somehow hear the podcast somewhere and, and start listening. And they're like, oh, yes, this is the person I want to join their program or work with them. And um, I would say the, the other thing is somewhere along the way, someone has picked up, like they've gone through my uh, Profit Drains quiz or they've gotten my book or they they, you know, saw one of my free gifts and they took it and they started going through the process and they're like, oh my gosh, this is everything I need. And, and that gave them the confidence to hire me as their coach or take one of my programs. How can we do the quiz? How can you do the quiz? Okay. Uh, I love this quiz, by the way. It's, it's so illuminating. Um, the quiz is at melaniebenson.com forward slash dream. We set up a special page just for the listeners of Dare to Dream. And at the quiz, you will find what your, if you have one, current hidden profit train is. And I ask you about seven questions, very fast. You can take it in two minutes. And then um, based on how you answer it, I will take you through a mini training on, all right, so this is your uh, current uh, profit train. Here's what you need to do right now to recode that and start achieving bolder goals and create more financial flow in your life. Yummy. So that's yeah. melodybenson.com slash dream. Yeah. And also I forgot to mention, we set it up so that when you take the quiz, I will gift you a copy of my rewired for wealth book to help you kind of unpack what you're learning and to learn more about the recoding process. And I'll explain what the seven money DNA blueprints are. And you can start to see like, Oh, that's probably me. And this is the one that I tend to operate out of. And I'll, I'll share a little bit about how to recode and what those four steps are and how you can use that in your own life or business too. Yummy. Thank That'll you. Be my gift. Yeah. It's a great gift. Well, awesome. And you know, along the lines, I'm going to take a little break here to tell you that I've also got a special for Dare to Dream listeners. And if you are an entrepreneur and you're ready to market and sell and create your own online products, think about Thinkific. It's amazing. I kind of, anybody who's anybody and any corporation that's any corporation is using them right now for their platform. So I worked with them to create a very unique deal just for Dare to Dream listeners and it is a powerful all-in-one platform where you can share your knowledge, grow your audience, and scale the business that you already love. So using Melanie's tools at melaniebenson.com slash dream, you can learn how to upgrade your wealth and your business and then start creating products because you'll get so much out of your way with the recoding and the wealth principles she teaches you. So you could be educating 10 students or 10 million, no matter, this platform's there for you. It gives you actually the easiest and the best support in the business. Go to thnk.cc slash Deb. And as a Dare to Dream listener only, you will receive the first three months of a business plan free. And after that, they give you a special deal. It's very, by the way, very inexpensive. And I have to say, it's drag and drop. 
check out my site. I've got my stuff there. It is so beautiful, this platform. I can't say enough. So it is an exclusive deal just for you, three months free. Go make some money. Use her principles and go make some money all at the same time. THNK.cc slash Deb. And if you're just tuning in, I'm interviewing Coach Melanie or Melanie Benson. Her website, MelanieBenson.com. And this is Debbie Dashinger. And ah, I so want to talk about this because this is my subject, Melanie. This is what I coach and teach on out in the world. And I run classes called the Ultimate Visibility Formula. And I work with spiritual entrepreneurs who are really do great work out in the world and they want to be exposed more to the media. So I help them supersede that both with the tech and the strategy, as well as some of the healing aspects of what's getting in the way of them and their visibility. So I want to talk about that with you in regards to entrepreneurs who may have opportunities that they're not noticing or taking because they feel very stuck or they choose to feel invisible. Hmm. Yeah, you're, this is really up for people right now. Um, I want to talk about invisibility. Yes. Because this is, this could be a real like mindset. Um, like it's like the gremlins have, have parked in your mind and they won't leave. Right. And you can be the most amazing you, you can be so talented, so passionate, so powerful in everything you do. But, um, I've noticed this kicks in when you start to compare yourself to others. Hmm. Or when you um, know that you're meant for something great, but you're, you're in this place that people aren't noticing you. So here's, here's a couple of different ways I see it play out, Debbie. And maybe uh, you can tell me if, uh, if I'm hitting the nail on the head here for your people. One is the people you're surrounding yourself with are not your tribe. Hmm. They are great people. They're probably up to amazing things, but that because they're not your tribe and, and they don't see you, they don't like have like this attention to who you are and what you bring to the table, you feel like you're disappearing. Now, part of that's on you, right? Because you have to be willing to stand in your power no matter where you are. But sometimes like you're just in the wrong crowd. And I see this happen a lot when, when entrepreneurs or messengers, somebody who wants to share their work in the world, they're showing up in these groups and they're trying to talk about what they do, but it's like, it's like they, they put the, the um, invisibility cloak on and they've just disappeared. No, but it, you know, like people like, I don't get it. And that's because you are probably not talking to people who have the problem that you solve or have the capacity to understand the work you do in the world. And doesn't mean anything about you. It just means they're not the people that you're meant to serve. So now I think, especially when you are, you realize like, I can't afford to be invisible in this community. Like I want to be seen here. I want to be here. You have to do a better job of messaging or you have to shift what you think you need and want from that place. So instead of thinking I'm supposed to come here and get clients or I'm supposed to get, get a whole bunch of bookings in this room, right? What if you shift and go, well, there's something for me to learn in this space. Maybe I'm supposed to connect with one person. Maybe I'm supposed to meet somebody that's going to introduce me to a speaker booker or whatever that thing is. Get it unattached to what you think you were supposed to get out of that space where you feel invisible and start asking yourself, what is possible here? Again, recode your mind, shift the game you're playing, show up in your power and let go of the attachment of what you think was supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you will stop feeling invisible and you will shine your light a lot brighter. What kind of recoding would be possible with just the thought of who would I be if I was fully empowered everywhere I went, every mm -hmm. I step, stepped into, every engagement I had with myself or anybody else? Mm. I, um, I went through a really, really rough time in 2010 mm. and I literally would go into spaces where I used to be the rock star and everybody would be like, you know, lining up to come meet Melanie. And I was like, oh my God, I feel invisible. Right. Mm. Now, of course it was me, like nothing really changed out there as much as I did. And I was going through a really tough time in my personal life that was kind of causing me to not feel like I could shine. 
And so I put this little note on my phone and it would, it would, you know, as a reminder that would pop up every day, it says, just show up, do you and shine bright. Mm -hmm. And what that did was it reminded me, I'm not going into any one of those rooms to do anything, but just be me and shine my light bright. And whoever is supposed to connect with me will connect. And it has served me so well. It literally, like literally it changed everything about how I felt about myself and what would happen. Right. Or like I was giving a presentation and like, okay, well that was not my tribe and that's okay. I practice, like I learned something, but I think that the next layer of this is if we want to stop feeling invisible, we have to really hone in, like going back to that, like getting out of overwhelm, how could you hone in and really, really like commit and, and focus on being visible in your most powerful tribe, like in the places that, that people get who you are and what you do. Mm. And I think that's a huge game changer. I really do too. I love that. And is there anything else um, that you want to add about recoding around this? Because I want to say, I feel like I just talked to a client myself today and I have this particular woman is an amazing healer. I can't even say enough about what she does in 20 minutes to change my world and her other clients' worlds. Mm -hmm. One of the most profound people I've ever met. And yet there is also this part, as soon as it comes to media or visibility, that gets very young, it feels really young to me, and doubtful. Mm. I'm not that. I mean, she even recently had somebody who works at a very well-known station say, I think we want to do a reality show around you. She's like, no, no, I, I, that's not me. So, yeah. So please. this, I've had to do a lot of recoding with people who are super talented around being willing to be seen. And yeah. um, again, everybody has a unique version of this. Like, I don't know what your thing is, but for some people, they actually don't feel safe to be seen. And it could be, that there's a part of you that's in conflict with that kind of visibility. So maybe there's this idea in your head that if I get more visibility, I'm going to get busier. My business is going to grow. And Hey, my, my primary relationship is so important to me or being a mom or a dad is so important to me. And if I get more busy, like, can I pay? So see what's happening. The subconscious mind starts to create this flurry of why it's not safe to grow. Cause I don't want to lose my time with my kids or my spouse. So I can't afford to get bigger. And what's really happening is you haven't created a way to grow that is congruent with your priorities and values. So that might be one version, Debbie. Another version is you may have had a trauma where being visible, you got hurt. Mm -hmm. And instead of dealing with that trauma and dissolving the hold that trauma is having over you, you're letting it define the impact you have on others. And so what I like to do is plug somebody back into their greater why. It, can you achieve your greater why, you know, and not do this thing? Probably not. So, you know, if you don't feel safe to be seen for whatever reason, you're afraid of getting attacked, you're like, are afraid of imposter syndrome, like, well, I don't really know what I'm doing, or I don't like being on video. Here's the bottom line. You cannot afford to play small. You cannot afford to hide and have excuses and, and let all this stuff get in the way of doing the thing you were born to do because you will always feel torn. You will always like feel like there's a part of you that has not been um, fulfilled. And, and especially if you're driven to make a difference in the world and you know you have to like get this out there to, to help the people that you're meant to serve, you can't let excuses and fears and conflicts and your limiting beliefs hold you back anymore. Like the world needs the light to, sh to shine brighter right now. Let's just leave it at that, right? We need the light to shine brighter. We need transformation. And, you know, we need you to feel strong enough. And so I'll leave you with this thought. Sometimes the commitment has to grow to be greater than the fear that's holding you back. And if your commitment isn't strong enough, to be greater than the fear that's holding you back. Yeah. Your commitment to the outcome has to be bigger than the fears that are holding you back. Because when your commitment's big enough, Debbie, and I know you know this, and as you're listening in, like, I know you know this, 
when you're all in and you're like, nothing's getting in my way, you, you kind of let things roll off your back. You're like, okay, well that didn't feel good, but carry on. I got to figure this out. And if you're not at that level of commitment, then maybe you're not pursuing the right goal. Mm, that is such a tweetable. I love that. Your commitment, <laughs> make your commitment greater than the fear that's holding you back. Thank you. Boom. <laughs> My drop. <laughs> One of the things I love when you are called a profit amplifier, I cannot imagine a more powerful moniker. Mm. It's an amplifier. It's so beautiful, especially because you do broadcast, right? So it's just yeah. a way through your coaching of broadcasting something called profits. <laughs> I want to know, because you talk about the secrets of shattering beliefs so we can actually break the six figure barrier like what you did. What are some of the ways, because you know, you hear so much out there, but it often becomes very pedestrian. And frankly, mm -hmm. it sounds really good, but in theory doesn't actually work for people. Yeah. And I would love if you have some actionable things that we can employ that create difference. In, in the revenue sign? In the revenue and profit side, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I have to preface this with saying that any of these strategies can only work if you've recoded your mindset that, that to be like at the six figure, seven figure, whatever your, your stretch goal is. Um, if you don't, what happens is your paradigm of possibility will reject them. You'll be like, oh, that won't work for me, right? And I think that's a lot of the times why people try strategies that should work and they don't is because your paradigm is rejecting it. So I just wanted to kind of put that in into the mix here. So there's a couple of things that really worked for me. And I, I actually went through traditional coach training um, 22 years ago, whenever it was, and I learned how to be a coach selling a coaching package that was really, really small and safe, right? And so it was like, okay, well, uh, I'm going to sell three hours of my time for $350 a month, right? And, but yet I had this goal of making six figures. And so when I started looking at the numbers of, okay, so I got to work with like 40 people a month, right? I was like, that's not the model of success I wanted. I wanted more freedom than that. So the first thing you have to do that's super actionable is you have to look at what is the, your path of generating more revenue? Do you have packages you can sell? Um, are you trapped in an hourly rate? Like if you sell your time or your work product by the hour, you're in a very hard time breaking free of the financial struggles. So you've got to think, what's the next layer of how I scale or leverage might be a better word, how I leverage my ability to deliver this thing. So can I raise my rates? Can I package what I do? Can I create um, big ticket items that you know are for high, high impact? Or it, do I have a way to actually create some kind of consistent revenue? So I think you have to find that next step for you. So if you're still in an hourly, let's look at getting you a package. Um, Debbie, one time I was working with a massage therapist and she's like, this will never work for me. I do massages. I'm like, I beg to differ. I will find a way. And what we did is we started looking at how she could sell packages of massages and start locking in uh, people who were committing to 10 massages instead of like, okay, it's been six or seven months since I had a massage. Well, you sell someone to 10, a package of 10, they're going to show up for their massages, right? So we have to take you where you are and find that next step of how do I, I leverage my time and my energy. So that's one thing I suggest is like, let's radically shift your paradigm of earning. How do you get to the next level? I think the second thing is you actually have to, and this, this is not on the earning side, this is on the financial flow side. You have to become a graceful steward of wealth. And um, I have actually seen people who make seven figures and are completely broke because they don't know how to be graceful stewards of financial flow. They spend everything they make or, and more and then can't figure out why they have no money to pay their bills or they would be really good at selling, but then you know they weren't really paying attention to what it was costing to produce that product. So when you become a graceful financial steward, 
what you do is you become someone who loves and have has a healthy loving relationship with the money flowing in their life you don't sit down to pay bills and go oh oh i hate paying my bills right you go oh i get to pay my bills today this is so exciting like i love uh, transmuting wealth in the world, right? Like I'm paying my bill, it's helping someone else prosperity. You have to shift, radically shift your paradigm of what it means to let money flow in and mon money flow out. And for some people, it means you need to really understand what you can create. Like you have to know, all right, these are all my work products. When am I selling them? When are they going to generate money? And how many of them do I need to sell to make my goals, right? Like you have to really drop in and go, yeah, I get my money picture. Wow. I could go much farther, but I don't know how much time we have. So <laughs> I want to honor our time commitments today. Thank you. That was deep, though. I'm sort of just marinating in that right now. There's some very thought-provoking elements to that. And I, what I particularly loved, besides that there's actionable pieces in there, is the thought form about being a graceful steward of wealth. I mean, that is an upgrade if I've ever heard one, because it doesn't just include the wealth, but it includes the stewarding of it and being graceful about it. And those components seem very winning to me. Yeah. Like recoding just in that title. Yeah, I know. And I, I, one of the money DNA blueprints is called an avoider. I grew up being an avoider. Like I never balanced my checkbook. I never knew how much money I had. I didn't want to know how much money I had. It was too scary. And so I had to learn how to be graceful with money and how to, how to honor the flow of it. And if I didn't know what was coming in, how would I know what to let go out? And, you know, like really saying, I commit to really understanding that. And I have a lot of things I do, you know, about like creating financial reserves and stuff, because I never want to be in that place ever again, where I feel like I, I don't have enough or like, I don't have yeah, the command or over it. Understood. Well, we're coming to the end. I have a couple of quick sort of personal questions. Okay. I want to get to know you. I want people to get to know you a little better. Um, a fun little factoid about you is that you are an aficionado about best spas and beaches. I love that. A lifestyle enthusiast. So tell me that hobby, like, do you have someplace you might recommend that is like, oh my God, this was the best. Yeah, I'm going to say, um, well, local to LA is Burke Williams, one of my favorite um, localized, sort of local spas is out in Palm Desert at the uh, JW Marriott. It's just, it's just a great spa, right? It's just fun. You just feel pampered there. But I'll say out in the world, um, just I've had the opportunity to have some beautiful spa experiences and beach experiences. And uh, one of the most magical ones was on uh, the island of Capri in Italy. You know, it's just one of those days where you're exhausted and you just find this local spa. At, I don't even remember what the name of the hotel. I think it was called Hotel Capri. <laughs> really unique. <laughs> and it was just one of those like perfect massages on a day where you're exhausted touring. And just I've, I've just been super fortunate. But pick, pick, your, pick your location. I'll tell you if I've been to the spa there. <laughs> God, what a great pastime. I love that. Luxurious. And Dare to Dream, what is your next Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Where are you recoding to and up leveling to? Well, um, there's always several in my mind, but the one that really pops for me is I, I kind of have a mission where I want to, I want to recalibrate the societal norm about uh, busy and success. Like, I feel like we have a broken definition of success and it's setting, you know, we started this conversation about overwhelm and I think we've set people out, up to be exhausted, overwhelmed and depleted in society's definition of success. So I am writing a book about redefining success and how to actually like recode who you are to be uh, successful in a way that's sustainable so that you're not burned out and exhausted and resenting your business or your work because it's stolen everything from you. So that's one of my dare to dream moments. I, of course I have to put the Oprah thing in there, like, you know, so get the book out and then get on Oprah's uh, super soul Sunday to talk about it. That would be the big, big, big dream. 
That's beautiful. Well, again, her website and gift to you is Melanie Benson, M-E-L-A-N-I-E-B-E-N-S-O-N.com slash dream. You can get your free quiz. A few questions there that will give you where you've got some issues to take a look at. Plus, she tells you exactly how to break down the issues so you can move forward and the gift of her book. So that's a lot of gifting. Thank you for being on Dare to Dream today, Melanie. Thank you. Awesome. And I'm going to end today's show with this quote from William Shakespeare. No profit grows where there is no pleasure taken. In brief, sir, study what you most affect. Next week on Dare to Dream Radio, I'm featuring Dr. Jeff McNary. We're going to be talking about bridging ancient modalities with Western psychology. Jeff works at the famous Rhythmia Resort in Costa Rica. And again, subscribe to this Dare to Dream podcast also on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger so you can always hear this number one transformation conversation. Thanks for joining us. And remember, the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place.